world Fox gonna play? Well, he played the most snap. Not like they just plugged another person in. Um, you know, bring in uh, Jason Peters. Now, I don't know. What's up, everybody? This is Brian the Bromad. Welcome to another episode of Bromatic Life Adventures. Well, today I am all hitched up and about to head down to the Texas coast for boondocking on the beach. I can't wait. Let's go. Welcome to Bromatic Life Adventures. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Once again, welcome to another episode of Bromatic Life Adventures. Well, I left early this morning on my way to the beach at Port Aransas. If you've seen one of my earlier episodes, you'll know that that's one of my, my go-to places when I want to get away and get my mind off of things. Well, this is my first time taking my RV. All the times I've gone before, I've driven my SUV, and kind of camped out in the SUV and occasionally in a tent. But this time, I have my RV. Well, normally, to get from Dallas to Port Aransas, it takes anywhere from six and a half to seven hours. Well, this is my first time taking my RV on a trip that was longer than two hours. And I've learned some things. One of the things I learned is that it's gonna take you a lot longer to get to a location or a destination pulling an RV than it does just driving your vehicle. So I, my goal was to make it here before the sun went down because anybody who has ever tried to unhitch a travel trailer and set up your travel trailer in the dark, you know that's crazy. That's annoying and frustrating and I didn't want to do that. But because I kind of missed uh, anticipated how long it would take for me to get here. It's already dark, so I'm not gonna waste my time trying to go to the beach and set up basically in the dark. So I'm going to be cracker docking. Now, if you don't know what cracker docking is, cracker docking is where you go to your local cracker barrel, and most cracker barrels allow for overnight RV camping. So that's what I've decided to do. I'm gonna gas up real quick and I'm gonna head over to Cracker Barrel. Turn right. Looks like I got in pretty level. I want to be able to pull my slides out and then not be affected by those trees. So it looks like I'm out there pretty good. I see there's about a, there's another class A RV right there. There's another class B motorhome right there. Way over there, there's a pickup truck with a truck topper over there. All right, looks like I'm good. I'm right, good to go. All right, so it looks like I got parked pretty good. Now, part of the cracker docking etiquette is that since they're allowing you to park overnight, the etiquette is that you go ahead and patronize the business. I purposely, well not purposely, but I kind of anticipated that I would not get to the beach on time. So I didn't want to eat because if I was to get here late and ended up cracker, cracker docking, which I'm doing, then it won't be too much for me to want a, a nice good meal. So I'm about to go in the Cracker Barrel, give me an awesome meal. Yeah, just for one. Yeah. 
What y'all know about this? Stop playing with me. If I tell you I have the itis, I had turnip greens, mashed potato with gravy, chicken fried chicken, fresh squeezed lemonade, homemade biscuits. It's time for me to go to the RV and get my sleep on. Thank you. Have a good one. Huh? You too. That was good. I really like those class Bs. They're just too small. All right, so I finally made it. Yeah, I know last night I was supposed to stay at Cracker Barrel, but I had some issues that I'll tell you about. But now I'm here. I'm about to set up. And once I set up, it's about to be on. All right, everybody, after a few challenges, I finally have everything set up in my RV. Let's take a look at the outside. So I'm boondocking at the beach in my RV for the first time. So of course, I had to unhitch. Um, since it is real salty at the beach and real uh, full of a lot of humidity, I went ahead and I capped uh, my trailer hitch electrical plug uh, with a freezer bag just so sand and moisture couldn't get inside of it. I do have my slide out, out. Close this, I gotta lock this too. Now I did, um, because I'm boondocking, I did go to a, a local RV park and I had to pay $10 in order to dump my tank, anything that was left in my tank and get fresh water. So I got fresh water here. Um, also, as you know, they don't have hookups here at the beach, but my new thing I bought is this Champion 4,500 watts inverter generator. It is a 30 amp. Now I have a 50 amp rig but I do have a 30 amp connector. That means I can only run one air conditioner at a time. Um, it'll pretty much control everything. Some things you can't run simultaneously. I know I couldn't run the microwave and I couldn't run the ACs and the fireplace at the same time. Here is my outdoor kitchen, which I actually absolutely love. Now, I did fill up my tank. I have a 55 gallon water tank, so I can turn this on just to wash my hands and rinse off or something like that. I have this little mini fridge. If I wanted to plug something out, out here, I could. I have my griddle that came with the RV. As you can see, I have the awning out. I got my chairs. Well, I only brought one chair. This time, since it's just me, and I got my carpet. Now, if you have not used one of these chairs, I forgot what they call them, I think zero gravity chairs. These are the most comfortable chairs. I'm a big guy. So I'm able to lean back and be secure that I'm not going to fall back. Also, I brought my little smoky grill. I will be doing a little bit of grilling as well as 
cooking on the griddle. One more thing that I forgot to tell you that I think is really cool is that every J. Cole model like this comes with this table that slides out. You just unbutton this, pull out a, a table already ready. You don't have to worry about trying to bring a table. It already comes with one. Well, you all, so far, I really am enjoying my first day boondocking in the RV here at Port Aransas Beach. But on this channel, I want to be transparent. I don't want to only talk about the things that are going right. Um, the first thing was on the previous video, when I started out this video, I was going to Cracker Barrel to Cracker Dock. Um, I showed you going in Cracker Barrel, eating that scrumptious meal. And I was ready to go pass out in the RV. Um, but when I went back to the RV, I was not able to get my um, slide outs because my battery had died. Now, I don't know why my battery is not charging up. I charged my battery overnight um, before I left heading out to come on this trip. I also um, charged it while I was driving six hours to get here, really eight hours to get here. So I'm not sure what's going on. So that was disappointing. So I, I left Cracker Barrel and just came onto the beach. And they ended up having to plug up my generator, which you're not supposed to do at Cracker Barrel. So I didn't do it there. I just decided to drive 35 more minutes to the beach. Uh, of course, I got here and it, was, and it was dark. I didn't hook up everything. All I did was hook up the generator. Now, the other thing, once I finally got set up, I wanted to come in and take a shower. Um, so I went over here to my control panel and I turned on, I went outside and turned on my propane. Um, so I hit it to on, propane, I could hear it flowing through, that was fine. And then I hit my um, electric uh, water pump so the water can flow through. So when I got ready to take a shower, as soon as I turn on the shower, I hear a loud pop and I look down and water was squirting everywhere on the floor. That's why I still have this mop here. I didn't have time to grab my camera and show you at that point. I was trying to stop the water from flowing out. What happened was for some reason, when I turned on the water pump, this little white knob popped out. When it popped out, water shot everywhere. Now, I ended up running to the board and when I once I turned off the water pump, then the water stopped, started shooting out, but I'm not sure why that happened. So, I did what I thought was secured, cured it in again, went back, turned on the water pump, and the same thing happened. So it happened two different times. So two different times I had to get all this water off of the floor so no mildew or anything would set in. So of course that was very, very disappointing and frustrating. Um, because of that, I'm not able to take a shower. So I actually had to get my water bottle and use the sink, put some soap on, the, on my little rag, wipe down, bring the towel out, put water again wipe the soap off of me. So it's just something that I had to do. But all the research that I did before I started RVing had many people say that you're gonna have these type of problems when you RV. All right, y'all. It seems like it's late, but it's really only like seven o'clock but it's been a, it's been a long day but it's been a very insightful day i've learned a lot got through a few challenges and now i'm about to relax and chill for the rest of the night i'm gonna try to catch this game if i can get reception by the way um in this area of port aransas i have at&t and uh usually i'm only getting around two bars in some instances i was only getting one bar but i, I have not gotten more than two bars so 
case you plan on coming to Port Aransas, you'll know the reception, reception is not too great. I don't know about any of the other carriers, but at and I'm getting two bars. So hopefully um, if I can pick up this game um, on YouTube TV, I have enough uh, reception for that. But let me show you my setup, my nighttime setup that I put together. Let me know what you think. I don't know what that is flying up the bottom of the screen, looking like snow, but it's probably saying. Anyway, this is my nighttime setup. Uh, this awning comes with some LED lights that I have on. Also for the ambiance, I've added some tiki torches while I sit and chill and enjoy this beautiful day. It was 70 degrees today. It feels like it's pretty warm now, maybe about 55 or 60. So I'm just gonna sit out here for a minute and chill. Good morning. Man, that was some great sleep last night. This RV fireplace is off the chain. It wasn't real, real cold last night, but I needed to break the, the chill a little bit. You know, it was 70 degrees yesterday, and I think it's going to be around 70 today. But at night on the beach, it got a little cool. But I tell you, I threw this thing on, and it worked wonders. Um, now I'm in Walmart because um, I got to fix the leak in my toilet that makes the uh, holes keep popping off. Uh, somebody on Facebook said it might be one of the PVC glue joints. So I'm going to try to find something to bind this together because these wash ups using baby wipes and uh, bottled water on a towel, that's not cutting it. So we'll see what we can find. All right, I'm back at the RV. Um, got back in from church, got settled, went to the store to get a couple things. Today is gonna be mostly a chilled out and relaxing day. Although I do have a few things I need to take care of, like trying to figure out how to patch up that water leak. Um, but right now I'm just chilling and I'm starting off uh, with a meal before the meal for today. This is the bake for the grilled chicken that I had last night. Just warming it back up. Got a little roasted carrots, mushrooms, and some asparagus. And I am about to get my grub on. All right, y'all, I've been napping about an hour or so, just trying to get my relaxation on. Uh, now I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna go in here and try to see what I can do to repair this hole that Cause my floor to flood two or three times. I gotta get that taken care of so I can go ahead and use um, all of the water that I need to use cooking and, and bathing and stuff like that. All right, so now I'm in here trying to tackle this uh, repair for this toilet because I can't have my floor flooded and I need to wash dishes and I need to wash me and do some other cleaning that requires water. So when I turn my water pump, on the other day to take a shower, all of a sudden I heard a And that little line that's coming right there popped off. See the little white tube right there? And this is the piece that popped off. This is the piece that goes into where it popped off from. And then the hose is connected to this side by the ridges. I put it in there, popped off again. I put it in a little bit tighter, popped off again. So what I decided to do with the help of a little research and some friends on Facebook, I went ahead and got me some glue. Now this glue is designed for a lot of things, but it's definitely designed for plastic, which is what this PVC uh, type contraption is. So I want to make sure that this time when I put it in there that it stays in. Also, I'm going to reinforce it with this seal repair tape. Um, it stretches. It says it's waterproof and all that. 
Uh, of course, I'm trying to avoid high RV repair, which they're going to jack the price up. Um, so I'm going to try to do it myself. So we'll see how it goes. All right, so I went ahead and got all the uh, the glue inside the cap, pushed it in there, uh, got the tape. They call it the ultimate tape, seal repair tape. So hopefully it will work. I do have to let it sit for several hours. So it'll probably be a little bit uh, into the evening before I can test it out. Meanwhile, I am going to go ahead and get my grill going again because I have a brand new meal that I'm going to be trying. So I'm going to get that going. All right, I got the charcoal started going. All right, y'all, today I'm going to be trying something new that I've never tried before, and it's called a foil packet meal. The way it's designed is you get some foil, you put all the things that you're going to cook inside of the foil, and you lay it on the actual charcoal. So right now my, my, my coals are burning until they turn right, until they're ready for me to pull them into the grill. Once they're into the grill, we'll get them smoothed out, and we're gonna lay our foil packet meal on top of the coals. Again, I've never done this before, but I've seen the results and it looks amazing and hopefully mine will end up amazing too. So let's get started. All right, just for the record, I know that I don't have any running water, but I'm a stickler for being clean and sanitary. I am putting on hand sanitizer. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get two sheets of foil. I got one down already. Then I have another one that I'm gonna sit right here. Now I have it laying, you can lay it flat on your counter if you want to. I have it laying uh, inside of a, um, a pan only because I don't have that much counter space in here in my RV. All right, and then after that, I'm gonna put a little olive oil Next, I'll add some red and white potatoes, some carrots. Next, I'll add some mushrooms. Then, I'll add some onions and green peppers. Chuck steak. All right, now I am going to add a little more of this olive oil, garlic powder, Italian seasoning. Can't see it, there you go. Seasoning salt. Smoked paprika. pepper, a little salt, and a little soy sauce. Now, I'm going to wrap it, flip it, I'm going to wrap it again, and now it looks like we are ready to go. So let's head outside. All right, looks like our coals are ready to go. So now I am going to get the coals. All right, so I have it, the foil pack meal on top of the coals. That's what I was instructed to do. So we will put it on for a while and come back and check on it.
All right, so now I'm gonna go outside and get the foil packet meal off of the grill. Hopefully it's ready, cause I am hungry. All right, y'all, here we go. I got it off the grill and it is piping hot. Here we go, here we go. Ooh, that's hot. That looks so good. Well, I will let you know how it is in a few minutes. Oh my God. I know y'all think I'm exaggerating. This meat fell apart as soon as I put it in my mouth. Mm -hmm -hmm. Well, my first foil packet meal was a success. The only thing that I forgot to put in here that I wanted to put in here was broccoli because I don't have anything green in here. But this is good. Potatoes, the mushrooms, carrots, delicious. Anyway, I ain't got time to shoot a video right now. This food is good. I'm about to tear it up. All right, good morning, everybody. I am up here about to finish packing up and heading out hitch up head out getting on the road back to dallas remember yesterday i went and i bought some uh some pvc glue and some adhesive tape waterproof tape for my toilet i let it sit overnight and guess what happened as soon as i turn on the water pump again my floor flooded again so i guess i'm gonna have to actually pay somebody come fix it anyway i'm still smiling because i am not going to let that define my overall wonderful experience from this rving boondocking beach trip that i was able to do the last two three days so what i'm going to do i'm going to finish packing up and when i get to corpus christi which i have to go through corpus christi to get back to dallas I'm going to do what a lot of RVers and campers do, and that is I'm going to go to a Planet Fitness and shower up at the Planet Fitness since I couldn't shower up in my own shower. But it's all good. Those things happen when you own an RV. All right, y'all, it's been a long day, long, relaxing day. I got a lot of stuff done. I got to relax, which was my whole purpose for coming here. Um, I did a little bit of my pre-cleaning. Um, before I take off tomorrow and head back to Dallas. Up here checking out the game. Well, the game is about to come on. Also, up here working on some stuff on the computer for one of my next trips. Let me show you what a beautiful morning this is. I sure hate that I have to leave, but I will be back. Beautiful day in Port Aransas as I am about to head out. Back to Dallas. All right, here is Planet Fitness. So I just gotta figure out where I am going to park. All right, so one of the best things that I could have done when I started my RV camping journey is to purchase a black card fitness membership from Platinum Planet Fitness. Planet Fitnesses are everywhere. And uh, it just so happened that it came in handy this time. Since I cannot use my RV shower, I'm just gonna go in Planet Fitness, shower up, get back on the road. All right, so I am good, clean and fresh. So I'm about to go get me something to eat and get on the road. Thank you for watching this episode of Romantic Life Adventures. If you thought this episode was cool, click on the like button and share this channel with your friends. 
If you have not already done so, I invite you to click on the subscribe button so you can subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to click on the notification bell so that you may be notified anytime a new episode is released. If you have any positive comments, please leave them in the comments section. All these things will help me grow my channel and make it better. This is Brian the Bromad. God bless and peace.